today's quick think. The largest crimes become politics. Crime is the most visible source of inequality. Crime deprives people of what is rightfully theirs. It creates an imbalance of power without consent. And its effects last for generations. Many of us are familiar with incidental crime, and can easily connect this type of crime to inequality. For example, theft and robbery visibly diminish the property of the victim, and enhance the property of the criminal. Our laws dictate how perpetrators atone for their crimes and recompense their victims. But in some cases, restitution is impossible. Murder does irreversible damage to the victim and the victim's family. No wonder then that the study, prevention, and punishment of crime is critical to the maintenance of equality. And no study would be complete without examining the second type of crime. Structural crime. Structural crime is much more insidious and much more damaging than incidental crime. Structural crime makes all of us, victims and perpetrators of crimes we don't know we commit. In many cases, structural crime is found in retrospect, in the history of a people that evolved beyond its barbarism. Today we see military conquest, slavery, and the displacement of native people as the crimes they really are. But many of our ancestors did not see them this way. Ask yourself, what is the structural crime of today? Maybe it's a political system that caters to the whims of wealthy oligarchs and scorns the welfare of the masses. Maybe it's an economic system that demands payment for life's necessities and turns a person into a salaried slave. Maybe it's a justice system that incarcerates desperate people and forecloses any chance of rehabilitation. Or maybe it's a social system that glamorizes consumption and wreaks havoc on the global environment. Crimes on such a grand scale are inevitably a matter of politics. And just like in the past with the subjugation of women and the segregation of races, some people today will defend the wrong side of history. You must remember that the perpetrators of structural crime are also its victims. And that the task of a more enlightened people is to study, prevent, and punish.